So, um, okay, so I'll keep speaking as I was. Um, so, be, but before, before I start on this, I wanted to make just some, some quick comments from last time. So last time, um, we uh, uh, discussed, or derived, I guess, uh, the, the conjecture for a fixed trace. So E non-CM elliptic curve over Q and R a fixed integer. We had, we had this um, pi E R X asymptotic to C E R uh, times root X over log X. And there was the whole point was to get the shape of this constant. Um, and so I wanted to um, say at, at the end, um, there was some discussion about, uh, you know, this, this constant had something to do with this M E. So it's two over pi, there's a sato uh, sat tate factor, you know, sort of C E R infinity, if you will, times uh, this finite factor, which looked like this. Um, Here by G sub M E of E, I of course mean the image of Galois at level M E, and then a product over all L's not dividing M E of some factor that's easier to compute because we know the image at all the other L's. Um, okay, and then this, this is explicitly computable, it's convergent. Okay, so this is, uh, this piece here is is always a positive, uh, not that this is a convergent Euler product. And so, the, so I, I mentioned that, um, um, so, so the, the question I'd like to ask is, uh, so I asked last time, um, uh, algorithm, uh, or th th this came up last time, for computing ME. So and I, I said I didn't know of one existing, but um, I was made aware by Julio Brau that uh, he has an algorithm uh, for computing this. So not only uh, when I said, oh, this is a good question, it was, it was so, it's solved, but it was already solved. I just wasn't aware. Also, um, however, um, he said that it's not really uh, maybe so efficient in terms of uh, running time. So uh, there are some people here who know more about running time than, than me that I'd like to discuss. You know, it would be very nice if we could get something sort of implementable. It would be very useful for people who wanted to test such conjectures. Because in, in a lot of these conjectures that, for instance, uh, 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 other lectures like Chantal and, and Igor have mentioned, uh, this, this ME becomes uh, you know, critical in the computation of any of these constants. So, um, so um, implementable. Okay, um, and then another question that I'll just mention is, um, uh, can you give, can you give um, conditions on E, R, guaranteeing that the constant is positive? I mean, Often, when you state these conjectures, you'd like to state a kind of weak form that just says, when, when is it true that this counting function counts infinitely many primes? And um, you know, this is equivalent to this. And um, in, in this, so as I, when I say this, uh, whenever you say conditions, it's like, well, that's kind of vague. So for instance, um, e.g., uh, um, if, uh, uh, let's say, if, uh, uh, R is not congruent to, I guess, one mod L for each L dividing the uh, the group of torsion points. Um, then, then um, limit X goes to infinity of pi E R X equals infinity. Um, you, 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 you might have, have this as, as a statement. Um, you might guess, because that was this x naught of 11 example 
had was the, the obstruction sort of came whenever R was one mod five and there was rational five torsion. However, this statement's not quite correct. So um, I won't discuss them now, but you can, you can construct other kind of strange examples. Um, similarly, in the, in the Koblitz problem, you know, giving conditions for positivity of the Koblitz constant is also a, a question that um, is not, uh, it would be nice to, well, nice to see somebody answer. Um, Sorry? Oh, so, so it, it's, just, it's just this. You know, so so it's, it's when is this zero? So it has to do with what, what, you know, what, what kind of images you can see and then sort of, yeah. So what kind of groups you can get that, that would have that be zero and then and what, for, you know, for which of these does there actually exist in the loop curve, basically. So, but this is, uh, so this is not quite right. Um, okay, um, right. Oh, and the other, the other comment I wanted to make was this. Um, so, uh, a remark that I, for, I forgot to make. Um, in our model, we said F E R of P was supposed to be the probability that a p e equals r, and so we, we, we modeled it by saying it's of the form phi e of r over two root p times some finite Chebotarov type factor, maybe I call it n, whatever, the, these are the approximating ones, times, well, I may I'll say it like this, times one over two root p, and then when we ended up summing these, and the point is, uh, I, f I forgot to emphasize this, um, this uh, model, this model assumes independence uh, of, um, oh, David, when did I start? Uh, quarter past. Quarter past, okay. So, it, so uh, I should say that if a fundamental assumption in the model is that knowledge about which residue classes mod n AP lives in does not have any influence on where the normalized trace AP over 2 P lives in terms of intervals between negative 1 and 1. Okay. All right. Just wanted to say that because that's, that's an assumption. Right? Okay, so, um, fine, so t today we're going to talk about the fixed field case. Okay? Um, so, so, uh, so now. I guess you can do this in the non CN case. In the CN, it's. Uh, oh, it, it should, should be independent either way. You, what, what are you asking? In the CN case, if you take the field of, uh, of complex multiplication. Oh, oh okay. okay. Um, field, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so for, for inner primes, yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, good point. Um, but other than that, it's independent. So, so, so now fix E over Q and K an Im imaginary quadratic field. Okay. Um, and then we, we have the local factor X squared minus a P E X plus P. And we define these V P numbers like this. X minus pi P of E say. This factorizes like this. Okay, for, over, over the complexes. And then we, we, um, we can define this counting function. This was the second. In Langtrotter's book, this is the second uh, counting function they consider. So, p up to x such that if I take the field generated by one of these vp p numbers, you want to know how often this is equal to a fixed field k. Okay. 
So I could just mention that the, you know, the CM case of this, uh, so here, oh, uh, non-CM. For the CM case, this is sort of boring in some sense because the uh, fields that you get are always, you know, are always either the C, you know, for ordinary primes, it's just the CM field that you get. Okay. Oh, I, I, yeah. So, okay. Um, uh, so, what do I want to say? Okay, so, so note. If Q pi of PE is K, then certainly, uh, certainly uh, that says that this, this factorization exists over K, which says that P has to split, then, uh, uh, then P belongs to what I'll call PK, which is just a set of all primes um, for which uh, P equals pi times pi bar for some pi in the ring of integers. So this is um, another way of saying it is the set of all p, p splits completely in h sub k, the Hilbert class field. So, um, however, the converse isn't true, and we need to kind of sort out what, uh, so what, what the correct converse statement would be. So, um, if, if this happens, um, then what we'd like to do is say something like this, uh, x squared minus AP of k is uh, the AP of k. I'm just, you know, defining this to be like this. So for, for uh, P, if P admits a factorization over the, the, the quadratic field K, like this, um, uh, then we, we, we'd like to say, Uh, that Q adjoined pi P of E equals K is equivalent to P in PK and the trace equals to the, the, the K trace is somehow equal to the Frobenius trace. Okay, okay uh, why can't we say this? I've just said, I've just made a mistake. What have I said incorrectly? Oh. What would I do? Okay. So I'll push on this one. Oh. What's, what's incorrect? Yeah, well, so, so I mean, um, well, so the, the, the only way I can have pi P and Z, oh, yeah, maybe I should say um, for all the primes, let, let's just have them, have them be good for E and also not dividing the discriminant of K. Okay. Well, no, but I mean the, the, the primes in PK aren't super singular because they, they don't right now. Pardon? All right, so, so the point is that when I, I've somehow I have these, uh, this factorization, P equals pi times pi bar. Um, yeah, I've chosen one, right? They're, they're only defined up to units. So the problem, um, but pi P of K um, is only defined 
up to OK star because it's a generator. OK, so, um, this, is, so this is nuisance number one. And that's that, um, uh, so A, you know, A, P, a K isn't well defined. Okay. Um, so, so what we'll do instead is uh, just say this. Um, so, so for, so to get around this, uh, so for P, one of these primes that, that has, admits a factorization, we define the factorizations of P to just be all the pair, all the, the unordered pairs, pi, pi bar in OK, for which P equals pi times pi bar. OK, so this is how we're going to get around it. OK, so, um, so then the units act on the set of factorizations in K of P. So, and equals, so omega k here just means the, the size of the group of units. It's either two, four, or six. Okay, so um, now what we want to do is, um, Okay, and then so instead of having just a trace, I'll, I'll define a, a set of traces. It's just a set of traces uh, of elements of factorizations like this. Okay, so again, has size equal to Okay. Okay. Oh, I, yeah. I should. I should say um, maybe for when I say P and PK, I should mean good. So all. So so all P. Just you can put insert the standing assumption that P does not divide the conductor of V or the or the discriminant of K. Okay, so it's good reduction for E and and. Um, and uh, not ramified in the quadratic field K. Otherwise, this is not, maybe not quite true. But if you assume that, then this is, this is true. Okay. Um, so now, um, so now we have, uh, have then the, the statement uh, that Q pi P equals K, uh, if and only if this is, 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 now, is now corrected to, to be this. Q. Pi P E equals K is the same as saying that P splits completely in the Hilbert class field and uh, A P E is one of the traces that's uh, realized over K. Okay, so this is, this is correct. Okay. Okay, so this means what we'd like to do is, um, so we're going to kind of consider um, uh, the probability uh, of this event, for if I replace this with R, and we already know from last time what the probability that uh, that uh, A P equals R for A P E. So, um, so we'll do. <clears throat> so we'll we'll define. Uh, we'll take F K P. Uh, sorry, F K R of P is going to be the probability of the event that uh, R belongs to the set of traces. So R is a trace like that. And we, we already know F E R P for the heuristic probability that R equals A P of E, okay, from last time. So now, um, what we'll do, what we'll do then is just uh, kind of sum these probabilities on R. So then, 
like to say that the probability that APE belongs to AP of K would be something like, uh, it would be, you know, something like the sum over all R and Z of F E R of P, the probability that AP equals R times F K R of P, the probability that, uh, that, that R is one of the traces. Okay? Now, um, what might go wrong with this? What am I assuming if I write this like that? So FKR is the probability that R is one of the traces from the fixed quadratic field. FERP is the probability that R is equal to the trace for Banius for the curve. And um, I'm going to say, okay, I want to know the probability that APE is one of the traces. So I'll just sum these probabilities, I'll just multiply them together and then sum on R. What am I assuming? Independence. Yeah. Assumes that uh, events are independent. Okay, um, and so this is nuisance number two. So the probability of the event that APE equals R and the probability that R is one of these traces are not independent in general. So we'll deal with that in a bit. So first of all, right, right now, re regardless of that, we're still going to look at this, okay? We're gonna try and estimate this, or we will estimate this, and then in, in the process, we'll come up with a, a conjecture for the number of primes up to x uh, um, for which a fixed number is, in the, is, is one of the Frobenius traces uh, there. So, so, so first, so step one, so we'll estimate uh, F K R of P. And then um, this will lead to a formula for high K R of X, which is the number of P and pk up to x, such that uh, r is one of the traces uh, in, uh, for, in, in the field k. Um, and this will be asymptotic to some constant times root x on log x. Okay, this assumes um, for, uh, let's see. So for r not zero. If you think about it, when r is zero, there, there really aren't, well, when r is zero, there really aren't a lot of these, so I want to say. Okay, and then, then, so there'll be some constant here. This is actually, uh, we'll recover some uh, conjecture of Lang-Trotter in that, uh, sorry, excuse me, this is conjecture of Lang-Trotter, but we'll also recover a Hardy-Littlewood conjecture in this way. And then, so that'll come along the way, and then eventually we'll have to mix the two. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, and we'll do this in the same way that we did before, or the same general procedure. Namely, we'll want to assume um, okay, so we'll kind of assume that. Um, so first of all, what are, what are basic things we can say about this F, K, R, P? This supposed to be the probability that R is one of the traces. So, one is that um, F, K R of P should be equal to zero if absolute value R is greater than two root P. So since pi, uh, you know, has absolute value square root P. Okay, so 
so pi, so if r is pi plus pi bar, it, it can't be bigger than that. So another thing is that um, we want to be able to say that. Uh, okay. The other the other question is uh, if I sum. Again, this looks like an infinite sum, but it's really a finite sum. What should I get? So again, these are heuristic probabilities, but in fact, this is really deterministic. Any given, uh, for any given R, it either is a trace or it isn't a trace. So if we look at this, um, either R is a trace or it isn't a trace. So as we sum over all the R's, we either get zeros or ones, and how many ones do we get? Well, just the size of this set, because we're counting one exactly when R is in that set. So it should be the size of. OK, so mm. Lang and Trotter are dealing with this in a, in a different way. I'm going to deal with it this way. Uh, um, either way, you're, you're going to have you know, so, some headache. But this, this will be our, our headache. So this is a weighted probability measure. It's not, anyway. It's weighted by the size of the, of the group of units. OK, so, so we'll, um, as before, We'll um, write f of krp as in this in the following way. Okay, and I'll write. Oh, and I want to put again as before. Before we estimated this, uh, where there was some level n, and then we let n go to infinity by divisibility. So we'll do the same thing here. So this will be, uh, there's a factor here. Okay. So here I'm putting this omega k in so that the, the weight is there. Uh, the CP is just arranged so that these things sum to 1 without the omega k there. And then these, this is some kind of a, a Chebotarov type factor, and this is some kind of an infinite factor. So I'll just recall what those are. So, um, so phi k of s is just 1 over pi times 1 over square root of 1 minus s squared. So this, uh, this gives, um, this is the uh, sort of distribution of Hecke. Giving equidistribution of you know, in sectors. So you can ask, um, particular if you're in a, uh, a quadratic imaginary field, if you look in some you know sector, then uh, the sort of number of primes that you see in that sector should not depend on sort of which direction you're looking. It should only depend on the, the width of the sector. And this, this, is, this is the statement if you, uh, you know, sort of ch uh, change by tr into trace, look at traces instead. Okay, so what does this look like? Um, well, we, we know this one. Um, this is also, you know, recognizable as the distribution function attached to a, a CM elliptic curve, yeah? where uh, the, when the field, uh, um, uh, over, which is defined over the CM, uh, CM field. So, okay, um, so in other words, the, the, the I'm trying to say here. Uh, oh yeah, so the, if I, if I add, yeah, what am I trying to say? Let's say this correctly. Uh, so if I sum all the primes, in pk of x, uh, and I record the number of, of elements of factorizations of p such that the 
this is the precise statement, belongs to some interval i, and then normalize by the, the maximum possible number of such, such elements. Take the limit as x goes to infinity. This should be equal to, uh, this is equal to the integral over i, the integral over i of phi of s ds. Okay, so this is, this is the statement. Again, this normalization factor here is just here so that this thing um, uh, can be at most, you know, can be at most one. Okay, so that, that, that's that first factor. The second factor, um, delta k r n, what is this? Um, this ends up being a, also a Chabotarov type factor, and all it is is uh, it's the limit. It's, the, it's, a, it's a certain density. Okay, so again. Oh, okay. Um, um, yeah, I'll sit like this. So, um, so here, uh, so when I say PKNX, um, I'll define that, but uh, here. So. not divisible by n, so that, so that you know, sort of makes sense. Uh, I won't, I mean, this notation I think is clear. All the factorizations uh, where pi plus pi bar is congruent to r mod n, and then you normalize, okay? So th this will actually have a Chebotarov interpretation, of course. Um, but, but before we even get into that, just note, um, note that the sum r mod n of delta k r n is equal to one. Um, wh wh why is that? Again, if I, if I sum over this expression over r mod n and pull the sum over r mod n inside, then clearly I'm just going over a disjoint union of all the things in here, and this, this set has size this, so I, I'm summing one, and so, so you get this. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Okay, so okay, well, well, I'll, also I should say, um, yeah, so, so now I'll, I'll give a claim uh, as before. Oh, and, and also CP is just uh, chosen so that the sum for all R and Z of, uh, of F, K, R, N of P is equal to one, so it's pro oh, sorry, it's equal to, I said, omega k, so this is a probability measure. Okay. Okay, okay so, so the claim, so this really is kind of mimicking uh, the analysis we did before uh, with a fixed uh, elliptic curve and counting for a fixed Frobenius trace. So here, uh, in, in that case, Cp was asymptotic to one over two root p. Um, and the, 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 this is the same situation as here. It's one over two root p because it's the length of the interval that these things are in. So how did the proof go before? Um, so again, you, you, you sum these things. You, uh, you group the, the terms in the sum according to the residue class of r mod n. You factor that part out, and then you, you realize the rest of it as a Riemann sum when you've substituted 1 over 2 root p in place of cp. Um, 
use um, so these real and sums approximations of the integral from negative one to one of phi k of s ds. And I should say, um, so this is, this is sort of actually why, um, if you really want to be careful about this and, and have the Riemann sum analysis work out right, you, uh, you have a problem. And that's that this function is not Riemann integrable on this interval, right? It's, it's unbounded at the endpoints. So really, we define a Riemann sum when it's unbounded by a limit process. You have the limit. So really, what we need to do is replace. This is a, a technical a nuisance, but so maybe this is nuisance number three. You really have to ch change this with some kind of truncation parameter. OK, fine. So it's either you know the minimum of r over two root p and one minus say one over two root p um, if r is greater than or equal to zero and the max of r over two root p and negative one plus one over two root p if r is less than zero. So okay, this is just a truncation parameter. It looks something like this. Um, Here's one. Here's one minus one over two root p. Here's negative one. Here's negative one plus one over two root p. So this is supposed to be really close. And this function looks like an identity function. And then it drops off here and becomes zero here. Or becomes, um, uh. oh, sorry. No, it doesn't drop off here. It goes like this. So uh, let's just see RP. OK, so if you actually want to write it down, you'll need to use that truncation. Otherwise, the Riemann sum analysis won't work. Okay. Or, well, you're stuck worrying about the distribution of fractional parts of R over 2 root P. And you don't, you don't want to be worrying about that. OK, um, okay. so once we have this, then um, we can we can work this out. <coughs> So thus, okay. so, uh, so f k r of p, sorry, r n of p is asymptotic to this, um, this factor, okay. bless you, okay, times uh, this other factor times this CP, which we said is 1 over 2 root P, times an omega K, okay? Okay, so now we'd like to sum this, but before we do, uh, just as before, you might wonder, okay, does this part have a limit as N goes to infinity by divisibility? So in fact, in fact, so in fact limit as N goes to infinity by divisibility of N times delta K R n delta k r exists, and we'll evaluate it in a second. Okay. So, but then, so this leads to f k r of p being phi k of this truncation, which is basically r over two root p times delta k r. Times one o times omega k over two p. Okay, so now um, we, we're going to sum this. So this leads to. Okay, we have a little distraction here. I just want to observe that now I can I can take this probability and sum it and get an approximation for or uh, an asympt a conjectured asymptotic for the number for for this prime counting function. Um, so this is supposed to be asymptotic to the sum primes up to x of f k r of p. And this is asymptotic to if I pull the right things out. Now again, for fixed r, so fixed r large p means that this c r p, you know, is r over 2 root p is, you know, is asymptotic to 0. So may replace 
as before, we can replace uh, phi of C R P by phi K of zero. You know, in, in this in this asymptotic, so we get this infinite part phi k of zero. We have this finite part delta k r, and we have uh, omega k times the sum of uh, of one over two root p. So this is asymptotic to this constant c k r times root x on log x, where this is just equal to this, okay? Um, I should say, uh, if we, um, so if you, I wanna just say, say a comment about ev evaluation of this delta k, uh, delta k r, this limit, okay? So to evaluate that, um, uh, we, we just use something, we use, need some class field theory, okay? So, um, so um, for n greater than five, there's a class field theory isomorphism. For, uh, so let me write it like this. <coughs> row k n from the absolute Galois group of the Hilbert class field here k ab is the ray class field of conductor MOK, so these are uh, NOK. So these are analogs of uh, these are analogs of the cyclotomic fields in the case of uh, class field theory over over imaginary quadratic fields. In fact, we know from Kronecker's Eugentron that they're actually given by uh, adjoining the n torsion of an elliptic curve with CM by K. And this is um, this is the class field theory isomorphism. This goes on to OK mod NOK. Uh, like that. Um, so using this, <clears throat> so using this, we can in interpret um, we can interpret these uh, these densities uh, here. We can interpret the density delta k r n as a Chebotarov density um, in that Galois group, okay, and that that leads to okay. So, so using this. can interpret uh, the density delta krn as, as a Chebotarov density in uh, gal in here in the ray class field. Um, and, this, and this leads to this, um, that delta uh, Krn is actually equal to just this. OK mod NOK cross sub uh, sub R over OK So here, okay, maybe this has an obvious meaning, but let me say it. OK mod NOK cross sub R just means uh, so before, uh, when I use this notation with matrices, I meant uh, uh, matrices where the trace is congruent to R mod N. Here, what replaces the trace is the trace from the quadratic field down to, down to Q. This is the set of all. Okay. Okay. 
So now we can compute this limit. So, um, so okay, using using similar stabilization. So I'll say, sorry, vertical stabilization. plus Chinese remainder theorem type arguments as before with when we computed the limit as n goes to infinity by divisibility of delta e r n. Um, we, we conclude that um, this limit delta k r um, of delta k r n is nothing other than, okay, so in this, in this case it's actually uh, le less delicate in the sense that these are isomorphisms for all n bigger than or equal to 5. So, you know, as n goes to infinity by divisibility, it's eventually divisible by 5. And, um, the, the only uh, and, and the only real place you have to uh, um, have any trouble is, is at, the, at the prime two, where the vertical stabilization stops after four. For all other primes l that are odd, the vertical stabilization stops at level l, and so this this leads to this. Um, oh, sorry. K mod four o k. Oh, and sorry. Um, what, what did I say? I was computing this limit. Um, and. The, the, these things go to zero, right? You had to have this normalizing. You had to normalize and similar. I forgot, I forgot to put the norm, normalization here. It's in the formula, isn't it? I hope it is. So <laughs> wherever it is. Okay. Uh, so um, this is uh, the four is there, and then over. Times. Uh, the product overall odd L, and then you just you, you only need to stop at level L for this. Okay, mod L. So, um, goodness, wow, am I almost out of time? This can't be right. Okay, so so this leads to. Um, uh, formula for pi k r of x is asymptotic to this uh, c k r times root x over log x. Okay, and c k r is given by uh, what I said over there. Okay, and delta k I just told you what that is here. So c k r is, is is in the box there phi k and phi k is zero. I guess we know what that is. So putting this all together, you get this constant. And if you uh, specialize, I'll just say as a remark, in this case, if you specialize to the case where, um, specializing to the case of, uh, <clears throat> oh, here it is, there's yeah, that. So remark. Um, if, so, um, uh, Pi k r of x um, is almost correct. So it's it's correct up to a sort of me type correction factor um, for pi e r of x when r is not zero and e has c m by k. So last time I, I assumed that e had I. I you know, showed you how to estimate this and get an asymptotic formula conjecturally for this. Um, so this is, uh, by the way, this is conjectural. It's conjectural. Um, when r is zero and e has cm by k. So in the case, in the cm case, when r is uh, is, is non-zero, you get you get essentially this formula. Now there's a, there's a fudge factor you have to include, basically corresponding to the fact that um, uh, the the representation attached to E over K is an open subgroup of kind of the, uh, the this uh, class field theory uh, group. So, uh, 
So remark two is that um, uh, specializing to uh, k equals q adjoint i, we have pi k2 of x is actually equal to the number of primes up to x um, uh, that write in the form n squared plus 1 for some n. Okay, so, um, so th this, this, uh, this asymptotic actually recovers a conjecture of, of Hardy Littlewood, you know, and this is kind of classical and sort of famous open question. Um, so we recover Hardy Littlewood conjecture. Okay, now what we want to do is, um, so that's all I'm going to say about the fixed trace case. Now, now the real work starts. We're going to mix the two models. Okay. So I mean, what's that? Yeah. So I mean, there's they they give a they give a different heuristic, you know. Um, with different considerations, but they, they, they actually derive the same constant and they get the same order. I mean, it's the same conjecture, but they, they, they do it by different means. And this is a, there's a family of conjectures of theirs that, you know, um, so. <clears throat> okay, so now we're gonna mix them. So we have f k r of p and f e r of p, and um, so now what we'll do is is this: we'll, we'll, we'll mix the two models together and say that uh, f uh, so f e k r s n p. <laughs> Getting a little unwieldy here. This is supposed to be the probability. Okay, remember we're we're all there, there's a level n and there's some kind of Chebotarov considerations mod n that we'll use. So it's the probability relative to n of the event that uh, a p e uh, is congruent to r mod n. And uh, 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 s, uh, you know mod n belongs to the reduction mod n, or maybe I'll say this. Uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, well, let's, let's say uh, s, I'll write this, mod n, okay? Okay, oops. Okay. So the, the, the problem, we, we kind of have to do this um, in general. There are elliptic curves for which these two variables are independent, okay? They, they do exist, but not all of them do. It's often the case that they're not. Oh, uh, so actually, so for some fields k, it, it's, it's always the case that they're not. Uh, for, for other fields k, it's often the case that they are. But anyway, in, in any event, we have to, in a form that conjecture correctly, we have to assume that they're not. And uh, what we'll do is um, we'll do, make the same, uh, same type of model. So um, we'll write it like this. Um, Okay, just for safety's sake, you know, we're introducing this truncation parameter. This is basically r over 2 root p. This is basically s over 2 root p. Um, times, and here's, here's this Chebotara factor, this kind of mixed Chebotara factor. Okay, times cp times omega k. Okay, again, um, the, this, so the, 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 total, the total sum here um, of F, E, K, R, S, N of P should be equal to omega K 
by the same considerations as before. This is really uh, deterministic after all. For every R and S, the value of this is actually zero or one. And it's only, there's only one possibility for R. So for each R, uh, I, I, I count one exactly when this is, this, this is true and this is true. Um, uh, Oh, so no, sorry. I need to. I need to. I need to kind of explain why. Sorry. I need to make an explanation for, for why that why that's a omega omega k on average. So let me just say that. Uh, wow. How do I do this? Like that. Ooh. Wow. Overshot it. Uh, oh no 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 no. Oh, two one. Oh, that's that one. This one. Sorry about that. Maybe I shouldn't erase this one. Maybe I should erase it. Okay. So let me define all those terms. Mention kind of what, what goes into this. <laughs> so I thought at the very least, I'm going to convince you that this second conjecture is a bit more involved than the first one. Okay. Um, so, uh, so, phi E we know, this is the Sato Tate. Remember, E is non CM. Phi K we know, this is Hecke distribution. It's the one I drew there. Uh, so, the, uh, and delta RP, sorry. The truncation parameters we know. And the, the one we need to define is delta E k uh, R S N. And this is just what you might expect. So I take the limit, x goes to infinity of, uh, again, I have to take primes like this. And I sum, uh, oh, uh, shoot, I made a mistake. Okay, so um, when I stated the conjecture before, well, uh, what, what mistake did I make? I've given you the wrong constant. Why? Okay. So let's go back for just a moment to the previous conjecture for fixed traces in the quadratic field. How did I make a mistake? Here's my mistake. Um, so uh, really, f k r of p is defined for primes p. Uh, yeah. So that's so, so a cor correction. Pi k r of x should be asymptotic to the, the sum of the primes p in p k of x. Okay, of f. K r of p. Okay, so if I'm if I'm only summing over these primes, what should I multiply that constant up there by? In other words, what's the density of these primes? <laughs> Uh, C K R above by what primes are these? These are primes P such that P admits a factorization pi pi bar for pi in O K. So, so in other words, they're primes that split completely in the Hilbert class field. So what's the degree of the Hilbert class field? Two H K. So. I apologize. Anyway, that, that should go into that constant up there, too. Okay. So, okay. So, before I do it, yeah, I just have to fix this. So, this B. Okay. So, that's what CKR is. And so. Okay. Because this comes, this, this enters into the picture here too. I just remember it now is because I was doing this. Um, okay, so this uh, is just going to sum one if a p of v is congruent to r mod n, and uh, the oh, I heard something. Is that is that is that 
Is that the music that comes up when somebody's giving a speech at the Oscars? <laughs> I guess I'm not, I'm not talking to an American audience, maybe. Uh, anyway. uh, so I'm supposed, I'm supposed to be done. And, well, let me, I'm supposed to be done. Yeah, yeah I'm running into coffee hour. So let me just say this, um, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll stop. So this, this, uh, this can be interpreted as a Chebatar of density as well. And eventually, this, this will lead to the right constant. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll stop here for the moment, and we'll finish, I'll, I'll quickly finish the derivation of this next time and then tell you roughly you know, the rough form of the constant and explain a little bit about it. And then we'll move on to some other things next time. So thanks for your attention, and thanks for letting me go over. Sorry. Oh, no, 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 yeah, so, so sorry, sorry. The, there's the esophagus thing, but that, that, that's the obvious thing. That's, that's still so obvious. The yeah, the non-obvious thing is this. So um, you can have, uh, so you can take a, a curve with rational torsion, okay. Uh, okay, say uh, E has, say E over Q, uh, you know, say, say it has three torsion or something like that, right? Okay, and then um, if you twist, this is, this is a weird example. Twist E by this subfield. And suppose this is a, a non-trivial subfield. So twist it by this, right? Then um, this, this, this rational three torsion point will no longer be rational, right? So it does not have rational torsion anymore. Okay. On the other hand, okay, I don't quite understand this, but when you look at the mod six representation, what happens is, um, you know, you have kind of a, you have a, GL2 F2 cross, uh, you know, this, uh, you know, th th this kind of thing. Here, here's the representation at three. And the point is that since this is uh, defined over the quadratic field in here, right, we have this epsilon character, and we have this, this map where this goes to plus or minus one. And these two maps have to degree, so you have to agree. So you have this kind of fiber, fiber product sitting in there in terms of the Galois group. And when you work it out, um, the point is that either, so for every, um, for every element of the Galois group, either the one over here is an eig is a, um, eigenvalue of the matrix, or if, if this is negative one, then the trace is negative one. And when you survey all the, uh, the elements in the non-trivial coset, they all have trace zero. In other words, they all have one as an eigenvalue. So what happens for this elliptic curve is, um, for instance, as you, as you look at the, the number of points on the curve as you go, it's either, it's either divisible by two or divisible by three, but not, but not, not one of them. It kind of alternates. You know, like so. so here's a weird, you know, kind of weird example that might make you. All right, sure. Okay. Okay.